Are pastors free to preach whatever we want from the pulpit? Do we have constitutional protected freedom of religion and speech? Yes, but a 1954 addition to the IRS code brought government censorship and preempted the freedoms that were intended by our founding fathers. This law has had a chilling effect. Pastors, responding in fear, began to self-censor. Fortunately, the 2,000 attorneys of the Alliance Defense Fund are reintroducing pastors to their rightful constitutional freedoms. Learn more at speakupmovement.org, where pastors are silent no longer. And join a nationwide groundswell of courageous pastors preaching boldly during Pulpit Freedom Sunday this October 2nd. Speak up. Boldly. Freely. And biblically. Speakupmovement.org. The speakupmovement.org, this is important for you to know. We have less than a week now um, to get involved, and I need you to mobilize as quickly as you can. I need you to now take this information and move. America is a Judeo-Christian nation, and just like every other time in our nation's history, the answer will come from the pulpit, from moral leaders connecting us with the things that are true. The pulpit is a place that has led the American Revolution, the first great awakening. That's where the seeds of our nation were planted. Men like George Whitfield, the spiritual grandfather of the American Revolution, one of the greatest evangelists of all time, it was this that led to the American Revolution. It was also the pulpit that led to the abolition of slavery, abolitionism in America, the second great awakening, massive religious revival. The American abolition, uh, abolition movement was, uh, to great extent, the political arm of the massive religious revival, the second one. Third one, the um, uh, end of that first was the uh, civil rights movement and Martin Luther King. It was this Baptist pastor, his philosophy of nonviolence based in Christian teachings, Reverend Billy Graham refused to uh, permit segregated seating at his crusades. He invited L MLK to share the stage with him during the crusade at the Madison Square Garden here in New York City, 1957. We've had great awakenings. It is time now for the last one, and I believe we're in it. In 1954, when Lyndon Johnson passed the Johnson Amendment as part of the 501c3 tax code, there wasn't, a, it was just a voice vote. There's no records of this even. This is where the freedom of speech or the freedom to preach became an issue. He had the language added to the tax code because he was running for re-election in the Senate and secular nonprofit organizations led by businessmen were opposing him. Since churches are also nonprofit, this amendment silences the pastors as well, but apparently it only silences the churches on the right. Bill Clinton knows this. Reverend Jeremiah Wright knows this. Obama knows this. They all feel free to make endorsements from the pulpit on churches from the left. I warn you, this network doesn't edit language. When people are using language for a reason, I'm not going to apologize for them. I need you to hear their language. Warning, shocking language in this montage. You know, that, of course, that I'm in North Carolina because you have an election on Tuesday. I'm very proud of my wife and I'm very proud of our daughter. And I'm very proud of the uh, campaign that, uh, that Hillary has made. Hillary was not a black boy raised in a single parent home. Barack was. Barack knows what it means to be a black man living in a country and a culture that is controlled by rich white people. Hillary can never know that. Hillary ain't never been called a nigger. If all of you make that decision, then I'm confident that not only are we going to have health care for every American in this country, not only is every child going to have a decent education, not only are we going to end the senseless war in Iraq, but you might just elect a new president named Barack Obama. So there it is. There isn't any balance because um, the right is threatened by the IRS. Now, there's good news here. There is an ongoing effort to try to get this amendment repealed and protect freedom of speech in churches. And it is both a movement of the left and the right. It is an initiative called Pulpit Freedom Sunday, and it's happening this coming Sunday, and I need you to reach out to your pastors, your priests, your rabbis. I don't care what their opinion is. I don't care if they're, if they're voting for Barack Obama or not voting for Barack Obama. This is about a principle, not politics. 
GBTV. The truth lives here.